So much of my channel is documenting my pain from the electrolasers and documenting the voices from the voice to skull technology. And then the rest of my channel is pretty much documenting these swacky projections that started around the same time as the voices and the pain. I'm going to freeze it here to showcase um, above the closet. I think that's pretty clearly uh, an eye or something that couldn't be interpreted that way. It even has an iris and it'll morph and it'll change. It, it'll... Here it looks like there's a pair of eyes and you can even make out the bridge of a nose. You could interpret it as being a part of a pair of eyes, or you could interpret it as just a single eye. But uh, this is what I saw like every single day. And then any time that Tim came into my room or Alan was nearby, or not nearby, but, but next to me, this stuff would die down where I really couldn't see it. But when they left the room, or when they were uh, facing in the opposite direction of me, this stuff would kick up a notch. The very reason why I take so many of these videos is because I'm trying to desperately capture this footage to show to my dad, look, I see this with my eyes unaided. Even if you can't make out any animations, because most of the time I don't see animations in this, I just see a lot of wiggling, a lot of movement, a lot of noise. Um, I thought my eyesight was going bad in October of 2016, and that's why I started filming the walls, because I was like, there's something weird about the walls. They look like, it kind of looks like I have one contact in and one contact out. But there's some movement to it. It looks like they're fuzzy and moving a little bit. And then I saw a silhouette of a man and a woman dancing. Maybe a half a mile away from the grove or a mile away from the grove. I was walking up a sidewalk in a neighborhood and I saw a hologram, like an icon of a person in a running position. And I was actually able to walk around it. And down, this, uh, down the street, I don't know, like half a block away, uh, there was a hologram of a green bicycle. And these things were lit up kind of like a neon sign, but not quite as bright as that. And it literally uh, glided past me on the street. I was lying on the couch like this long ways. And then up that way was a Marion Kina poster. And immediately when he left to go drive for lifts, all this red light flooded the apartment. And a lot of these, these they weren't quite like laser beams, but like you can think of them as like laser beams. They're not, they weren't quite that strong. It's important that when you look at it, my eyes saw that unaided. It is not camera noise, dad or Tim or anyone else. It is not camera noise. The red light flooded the room, especially over the poster. And this distortion happened right in front of the face. Now I'm not saying that the print changed itself. <laughs> I don't think there's a ghost or some supernatural thing happening. But there was a beam coming in, hitting the wall. I don't know which direction it was coming in, but it's hitting the poster right around the face. I mean, it was all over the place, but there was a strong concentration. A lot of times when you watch my videos, you'll see, see like these little swirly points, like vortexes. There's one right over his face. And I literally saw his face change or morph with a projection on top of it. I don't think it was just a distortion, but it changed. And this is, an, this is evidence of projection mapping because it recognized the face and it put other faces on top of it. It even removes the head entirely at some point and it makes him look like he's decapitated. The video doesn't do it justice, but it's still a good video of evidence showing what my eyes saw. It actually was much more elaborate in person. It was much clearer in person. Is where his tail is. They kept making it look like there were sparks traveling upon it. The video doesn't quite do it justice, but you'll see like little white blinks of light. And to my eyes, it looked like illustrations of sparks going up his tail, going whoosh especially at the end of it. The last time I'd seen Clyde was when I was at the Grove uh, on my birthday, actually. Before I left jail, they kept bringing up Clyde like a motherfucker over and over and over again. And uh, he's on the sound board. He's also on the visual board. Um, and the, they kept uh, projecting his face. Well, after my birthday um, in 2018, I uh, went to his house and I saw realtor realty uh, for sale sign, uh, but I called the number and found out it was his brother and I found out Clyde died. And immediately after that, they did the visual board with Clyde. So around the time that Clyde died, unbeknownst to me, they were projecting images of Clyde's face into my eyes while I was in jail. Once again, I don't have the power of premonition. Also, when I was at the manor house, they put projections on the wall, even in the middle of the day. Like even those still shots and the shots of, of the, it's a plain white wall. I mean, it's off white or whatever. It's like got a bad paint job, but it doesn't have pink and blue and green colors all over it. Nor does the camera produce that when looking at a normal wall. <laughs> like, do you see that here in this wall? No, they're not doing it crazy. It's not like the photo that I'll put right here. 
It's not like that. I'm going to focus in here on one area of the wall in which I interpreted sort of like a creature and maybe you interpret it differently or not as nothing at all. There's the eyes and there's the beak. It's a common shape that I see in, in this uh, quite often. And uh, I'll show the show it in the rest of the image now and remove the enhancements. And you'll see that the shapes are still there along with a whole bunch of other shapes. And again, whether or not you interpret this as anything, I still saw these shapes on the wall in these colors, not as saturated, and I saw them moving like this without the use of a camera. I saw this with my own eyes, unaided, without the camera. I didn't just choose to point the camera there and then, you know, in a paranoid state, like, look through the camera noise. This is not camera noise. I saw it with my eyes. And here's a freeze frame, and I'm going to put some eyes on here, what could be interpreted as eyes. And uh, I think in many of the cases, it's like, pretty obvious that it's intended to look like eyes. And the gang stalker's terrorists like to project uh, faces into the trees. And they can also create faces physically with their weapons that can literally jab you or push you, you know, to the side or push you forward or push against you. I've literally seen them create in slow motion um, uh, eye sockets and then uh, not just pupils, but then uh, irises as well. This is actually a stop sign right there, and I kept seeing it rapidly flash and change different shapes. I also saw that house there on the hill. Uh, I would see it rapidly change colors, similar to what it looks like now. Uh, this is slowed down uh, a little bit, but uh, in slow motion, you can see how it like puts things that could be interpreted as faces. Those eyes, when they uh, this twack when it intersects. Uh, anything that's brighter than it or or uh, that can show the pattern against it uh, It makes it look like there's faces on it. So and it captures the attention It kind of confuses you and it, and it allows you to waste your time because you're just sitting there staring at it in awe or confusion You'll see here that the stop sign continuously looks like it has a pair of eyes or a single eye on it Or what could it be what could be interpreted that way? Uh, you know, even my channel icon, you know, looks like there's a face in the stop sign. And I'm going to show how you could interpret it uh, with having, you know, eyes in it and how they can confuse people and catch someone's attention and waste their time and scare them or freak them out or just confuse them. Similar to the projections on the walls or in the bedrooms. Um, you might not see these shapes yourself or interpret them that way, but I hope that this points out how they could be interpreted that way and are meant to be interpreted that way, I, I believe, to trick, uh, to take advantage of the brain's pattern recognition and facial recognition and, and, and eye recognition. Not only can they project images into the foliage, just like they can into bedrooms and into wall, on, onto walls, make eyes. So if there's a hole already in the tree somewhere or a hollowed out point, I've literally seen like another one appear to the left or to the right of it to give the appearance of another eye and for them to like I've literally seen it in slow motion to where they were literally creating an eye. This is a shot above the roof of the neighbor next door. There's the roof. It's really hard to see as you can see it's obscured by the twack not just low light conditions and that's not just camera noise but there it is again but this is why it's impossible to get footage of the drones especially at night. Um, because if you turn your flash on, all this twack that you see reflects back at you. It's like turning your bright lights on in the car uh, when it's really foggy. It just, you know, reflects back at you. That's why they have fog lights that are lower to get below the fog. But it's the same type of concept. So literally, drones could be flying all, all above you, and you literally wouldn't be able to see them, see them at all. This is a good one here because it pretty much just shows just the eyes. Um, some of them are still stacked on top of each other, but... So pretty clear that, you know, you can even see the glimmer in the eye and you can see the iris in some of these cases. Sometimes they have irises like in the middle here. And like spray bottles and Windex bottles, like getting creatures on them. And uh, here you can see, you can interpret it as uh, creatures in various ways. And when you focus in on uh, the eyes or one of the eyes, sometimes they'll say shit like they'll be like, ooh, there's a creature there. Or they'll go, creature, feature. Or they'll say things like, when the Cyclops went above, they went, the Eye of Thundera, 
or Eye of Thundera. So they know exactly what you're looking at. Because they, they, I don't know if they use the electrolyzer for that, but they can use it like an invisible pointer and they can get you to focus in on a single thing. So here's in my bedroom. This is the wall above my closet. Um, all this movement I saw with my eyes without the aid of a camera. I'm going to freeze it here and I'll uh, showcase this area right here. Um, I think it's pretty clear that these could be interpreted as eyes. And again, it doesn't matter if you can't interpret them that way. I saw it with my eyes unaided. So if you look at the eyes, you could interpret this loosely as a mouth. Not so much when you look at the mouth directly, but if you focus on the eyes, then it's more likely for you to uh, be able to see that as a mouth in your peripheral vision. So here's something I think is more clearly the eyes. I mean, or it could be interpreted as eyes. I'll even suggest like where some facial features are. I'll do it here too. There's even some color there. You can even make out the irises in them. In regards to the image on the left, they like to make references to gremlins and gizmo because that was the, the gizmo was the nickname of Jason Barrientes who had my stolen phone. Here I'm in the living room uh, doing some footage of a reflection to showcase what I often see in the mirror. And I'm not saying that this is necessarily the intended content, but I think it's meant to be interpreted multiple different ways and to trick the brain into pattern recognition. But I thought this one was pretty clear uh, uh, how it could be interpreted that way. And uh, you'll see like when I remove it that this is actually where my eyes are up here. And that's where my face is. My eyes definitely looks more cartoony than the other. And if you also look at my mouth, it's it looks like it's crooked. But I'm not twisting my mouth in any sort of way. I'm not I'm not doing a smirk or anything like that. Here, I think it's very clear that there's some sort of anomaly happening between my eyes and the reflection, um, or between the camera lens and the reflection. Um, my eyes appear to you know get bigger. Um, they appear to look illustrated. Um, there's absolutely no filter on this. It's not enhanced in any sort of way. This is the original footage. Here it looks like one of my eyes is lower than the other. So in a second, my eyes are about to light up a little bit. And I've seen this, uh, do this on other people that I was talking to. They did this to Micah Swindle when uh, he would hang out at the Grove with me sometimes. Sometimes his eyes would light up. I'm assuming he wasn't aware of it. Here I'm going to be putting my fingers and my hand between my eyes and the reflection. So you'll see that the projected imagery, the projected eyes, the projected twack still shows up over it. So here my hand is in front of both eyes and you can literally see another pair of eyes projected onto my hand or between the reflection and my hand. Here again I'm just showing how the eyes still project in front of or on top of. Uh, the reflection or my hand and how you can interpret multiple eyes there, how they stack eyes on eyes on eyes. Right here, there always seem to be an eye on the wall. And right here, it looks like two eyes. You can look at it differently and interpret it as one eye, but it kept morphing into one eye and then two eyes. And it looked like the, the, uh, the eye was moving back and forth. And as always, keep in mind, I saw this with my eyes unaided. I saw this with my naked eye. And as I say the naked eye, uh, they're playing naked eye. And I'm going to do some interpretations in the projected twack. Keep in mind, uh, I saw this with my eyes unaided without the use of a camera. This with my eyes unaided. I didn't just feel like going outside and spending hundreds and thousands of hours over years just filming trees just for shiggles and filming walls and filming the carpet and filming my the hair on uh, the, my skin and my hair and uh, my poop, <laughs> my dog's poop. All while, all while suffering from 30 other maladies. Do some more interpretations here. So even with this eye, the top right eye, look at that. That has an iris. It has whites of the eyes, and it has a, a colored uh, iris, and it has a pupil, and it even has a reflective sheen to it. So they like to play with things like that. And look at that. Like that is very clearly, easily uh, 
uh, interpreted as an I. Yeah, whenever I looked across the street here, this is the house across the street. I would like it really looked that colorful a lot of times. It looked like the garage door was flashing. I'm going to do some interpretations here. And those pair of eyes, you can even make out the irises in the pupil. I saw these anomalies with my eyes unaided without the use of a camera. The trees around me look like they have faces in them. And it wasn't every day that they looked like that. There's another interpretation. You can even make out the irises in the eyes and the glimmer. But most nights it didn't look like this. Two nights in a row. And then it would sort of like reset back to like normal, almost normal. A lot of times it looked like there were faces in the tree. And I know that trees are like clouds. You can interpret multiple things in them. I'm going to do some interpretations here. But I saw the same patterns in the trees that I saw on the walls sometimes. Or the same, and the same anomalies. Keep in mind I saw this with my eyes unaided without the use of a camera. Zoom in and lighten it up a bit. Uh, this obviously looked, looked like a face. I think that's pretty easy to see how that could be interpreted that way. They're also mentioning the thing to the right, and they're mentioning Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It looks like something with a mask on, but I didn't circle that one. And this one as well. It looks kind of like a face. It looks like a face. I'm going to do some interpretations here. And when I was out there alone on some nights, this twack would increase. It looked like I could see faces in the trees. And um, I've seen them much more elaborate and complex than this and more realistic looking. And even this doesn't do it justice. But I think it's pretty clear how you can make out eyes and a face out of this. I'm going to do another interpretation here. In this case, you can still see, you can see the irises in the eye. Like there's another interpretation. Looks like, you know, it's opening, the creature opening its mouth. I'm going to do another interpretation with like the eye slightly lower. But all this noise I saw with my eyes. So whether or not you can make out any content in this, I still saw it. And around the TV and around the, the table to the left of it. And um, the, the I think there's a, a plant in the corner there. And the artwork. Um, this noise... Uh, appeared to come out and I, I don't believe it just appeared to it came out in a three-dimensional space so they are holograms or they appear to be like holograms so all this noise and all this twack um it it would fill the room up with all this squiggling and all this movement um it appeared to create like these holographic mostly transparent creatures around like the table with like eyes on it and mouths on them um, or something that would was meant for the brain to interpret it that way um, and again regardless if you can make out any content in this projected noise or this projected twack I saw it with my eyes unaided without the use of a camera I didn't just simply point the camera into a dimly lit room and just look for the noise and look for patterns in the noise and look for you know crazy stuff and get in a paranoid delusional schizophrenic state suffering from 24 7 psychoses none of which i'm actually experiencing i saw this with my eyes and so i pointed the camera in the, in the direction that i saw this crap and so that i could get footage of it so you are experiencing what i saw with my eyes sometimes the colors are different sometimes it doesn't uh it never really does it justice so keep in mind that when i saw this um i was able to make out uh content that was that was clear to the eye than it is to the camera and again i think that this was meant to be used for crises and hostage situations so that you could uh if you were like in a swat team you could uh, uh provide some camouflage and cover for victims or uh hostages and so that you could also confuse the perpetrators, the gunmen, the, the, the terrorists, uh, and make it harder for them to find victims, make it harder for them to shoot the SWAT team, 